Right? The writer of the Hebrews was very plain about this. He said, let us lay aside every weight. I, I like that little picture. I found, got that right off the internet. Yes, I did. I tell you, I don't want to enter 2019 carrying a bunch of stuff out of 2018, right? I don't want to be dragging 2018's hurts and offenses and sorrows and burdens and cares with me. No, sir. I'm telling you that in this service, at the end of this service, we're going to let go of all of that. We're going to drop all of that. And we're going to march into 2019 absolutely free. Can you give the Lord a big hand of praise? Amen. We're going to let go of every way. We can say, Pastor, you don't get it. I've been mistreated. I've been abused. Let go of it. Come on. Get free of it. And the scripture goes on. It says, in the sin which so easily, notice the word it says, ensnares us. The picture that the writer paints about sin is not just that I'm running along and all of a sudden I get tripped up and I fall. No, sir, it's like a snare. How many of you know what a snare is? A snare is like what you catch a rabbit with. And the rabbit runs into that snare. And guess what? He does not advance anymore. In fact, really, a snare is a death trap. And that's what the scripture says. Sin will entangle us. It will ensnare us. You can't move forward. And there are a lot of people that get deceived into thinking that God really doesn't care about the way that we live. That's not true. He's very concerned. He wants us to be free. Hello? He wants us to be able to run the race that he's given us. Not become ensnared. And I've got really good news today. If there's anyone who's ensnared by an addiction, who's ensnared by, by depression or discouragement or doubts, listen to me. The scripture says this, whom the sun sets free That's is right. free indeed. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. There's an Old Testament verse that goes like this. My soul escaped like a bird. <laughs> Out of the snare of the fowler. Come on. I'm just here to tell you that the Lord doesn't want you to run and become ensnared. The devil will tell you, you know what? You'll never be whole. You'll never be like everybody else. You can never really be free. Let me tell you, those are all lies. Those are all lies. And the weight that you're carrying today, it might just feel huge and heavy. But let me tell you something. God is going to give you the grace to just put it all down, to lay it all aside. Come on. And then we can walk forward and run into 2019 in victory today. Can we give the Lord a big hand of praise today? Amen. And then if you're going to finish well, you've got to keep running until you reach the finish line. And man, oh man, the race can be long. Paul said this, he said, I have finished my course. The author to the Hebrews said, we are looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. You're not done running the race until you breathe your last breath, right? You've got to keep on running. You've got to keep on going. You say, well, man, I've been hurt. I've been wounded. Doesn't matter. You've got to keep on running. That's right. You say, well, I've been through some stuff. Oh, I've been through some trials. I've been through some storms. That's okay. Keep on running. You say, well, you don't get it, Pastor Bob. I'm tired. That's all right. Keep putting one foot in front of the other. Amen. The Lord will help you get there. Amen. By 7 p.m. on October 20th, 1968, at the Mexico City Olympic Stadium, it was beginning to get dark. It had already cooled down. The last of the Olympic marathon runners were being assisted away to first aid stations. And over an hour earlier, Manawaldi of Ethiopia had charged across the finish line and winning the 26-mile, 385-yard race. And he looked as strong and as vigorous as the, as the moment he started. They were all getting ready to leave. Thousands of spectators were getting ready to leave. But all of a sudden, they heard the sirens coming, and they heard a lot of commotion at the gate as someone was entering the state, the stadium, and all the attention turned to that gate. And a sole figure wearing the colors of Tanzania came limping into the stadium, all right? His name was John Stephen Aquar. He was the last man to finish the marathon in 1968. His leg was bloody. It was bandaged. He had taken a horrible fall 
early in the race, and now all that he could do really would be to limp around the track. And but when people saw his determination to finish the race, that entire crowd stood on their feet and they applauded him. And when he finally finished the finish line, somebody came to him and said, "Sir, you were badly injured. Why didn't you quit? Why didn't you give up?" And Akwari, with that African quiet dignity that he had, he said, "My country did not." send me 7,000 miles to start this race. My country sent me to finish the race. And so it is with God today. God didn't just send you to start the race. Hello? God didn't send you to start a race in a relationship with God. He, he sent you to finish the race. Oh, the start of the race is a wonderful thing, right? Man, everybody's feeling energetic been training, been eating right, you're like a rabbit ready to go. I mean, you know, the gun sounds, everyone's cheering, and everybody takes off. It's like electricity in the air, and you feel like a billion dollars as you come out of the gate. But when you're in a marathon about 16 miles later, it's a whole different experience. Is there any marathon runners here? Who's running? Right Not very many of us, all right. You get blisters on your feet. You feel like a knife is in your side. Your legs are turning to oatmeal. Hello. Your muscles are screaming from pain. And it's a completely different experience. And often in life, what happens is people go down through the race of life. They think that the race of life is not going to bring them any pain. But how many of you realize that Jesus said this? In this world, you're going to have some troubles. In this world, there's going to be tribulations. You're going to experience some loss, I've got to tell you. You're going to experience some sorrow. But what you've got to do is you've got to learn how to run right through the pain. You just ignore the pain and you put your focus on the Lord and say, God, I'm going through for you. Amen. Amen. Did you realize that most world class runners always have what they call a kick? Who knows what a kick is? A kick is when you get towards the end. Doesn't matter how long you've run, how tired you are, you've got enough energy that that last 200 yards, you are going for it and you're giving it everything that you have. And let me tell you something. I believe that believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, we've got a supernatural kick. Hello? Come on. I'm talking about the power of the Holy Spirit in our life. I'm talking about a supernatural energizing by God. Amen. As we wait upon the Lord, as we trust in Him. Amen. At least even though we might feel weary, even though we might feel tired, it's okay. We're going to continue on, and we're going to come across a winner. In fact, Isaiah 40, 31 tells us this. It gives us the secret of being able to run the marathon race of life. How do you say, I want, to, I want to know what to do in 2019 when I don't have any energy? I want to know where to go when I'm feeling weary, when I'm feeling tired of the race, when I want to give up, when I want to just sit home and sit there with the TV zapper and zap the TV. I'll tell you what you need to do. It says this, those who wait on the Lord. Do I got any waiters on the Lord here? People that know how to get into his presence, people that know how to push through, Amen. People that know how to just sit there and worship and love him and honor him and give him praise. Amen. It says that those are the people who they're going to renew their strength. And it goes on to say they will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not be weary and walk and not faint. Oh, hallelujah. That's for you. That's for you and me in 2019. If you want to have the energy to make it through. How many have you ever seen the movie Chariots of Fire with Eric Little? You remember Scotland. He uh, went on to become a missionary. But Eric Little ran in a meet in England that was between England, Ireland, and Scotland. And he ran in the 100, the 220, the 440 yard events. And then the 440 got off to a terribly bad start. The gun sounded and everybody was trying to get that inside position. And they were all jostling and pushing one another. And Lindell Speak got all tangled up with a, a guy from England named J.J. Gillies. And he tumbled and he fell to the track. And he sat on the track for just about a half a second. He didn't know if he was hurt or not. The next thing he knew, the official was saying, get up and run. He jumped right up and went. He was already 20 yards behind. How many of you realize that in, 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 in such a race, it's very difficult to make up those full 20 yards? 
but he just started running. He gave it everything he had. Finally, he was in fourth place. About 40 yards to go, he pulled in the third place, then second, and right at the tape, he passed the very guy who tripped him up and won first place. Those who watched that race said that was the most incredible win that they had ever seen. And so here's what I've got to say to you today. There might be some of you here today who you feel like, man, Satan has just knocked me down in 2018. I feel like I've fallen to the ground. Well, let me be your encourager today. Get up and run. You say, I came to the house of the Lord on the last Sunday, and I was looking for a word from the Lord. This is what God says. Get up and serve me. Forget about the fact that you fell. Forget about the fact that you got tripped up. And you put your eyes on me and start running for the prize because I'm going to be with you, and you're going to win. Amen. Amen. Oh, I like Philippians 1 and verse 6. And it does not say, he who began a good work in you will carry it on until completion, until the day you go flip flop on the track. How many of you know it doesn't say that? It says, he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's not going to let you fall beyond his ability to pick you back up. Amen. The only way you really lose is if you stay down. Right. All you've got to do is keep getting back up. Do I got anybody here that says, that's for me, Pastor. I'm getting a hold of that. I'm getting back up. I'm getting back in the race. Amen. Get up and run. Peter, he thought he was down. He didn't want to go down. In fact, Jesus told him, he said, Peter, you're going to deny me. How many of you know he did not want to hear that? But almost immediately then he said, but when you turn back, strengthen your brothers. That's right. Amen. You can just get back up and keep serving the Lord. Amen. Amen. 